tall enough. I think I'm tall enough without standing up on there. So I'd like to introduce uh, Mahika Werawana. Uh, she's from Massey University, where she's doing a master's, and she's studying heat stability of whey as a base ingredient in food and beverages. It sounds uh, like an opportunity for gear. <laughs> Hi. Um, this is our study about the heat stability of sheep milk whey as a base ingredient in foods or beverages. And uh, we know like when we uh, are making cheese, we coagulate the milk and then cut the curd and separate the curd and pr for the process into cheese, which um, you make lots of money. But um, <laughs> <laughs> what happens to the rest of the liquid, uh, which we call whey? And um, usually uh, we strain it off and go for animal feed. So what we are, uh, and this way is the um, main uh, byproduct or the main waste stream in cheese processing. So what we were looking uh, in this in this study was to how we can um, develop this uh, waste stream or the waste stream into a valuable product. So we studied the potential of sheep milk whey as a stable base ingredient in um, ingredient for food or beverage. Um, first, we studied the composition of sheep milk whey. As we can see, it's like um, almost 93% water and like 7% solids, uh, comprised of whey proteins and might be some res residual casein and fats, minerals, especially like calcium, magnesium, and phosphates, and some lactose. So when we look at about this composition, we can see uh, since it's 93% water, it's highly unlikely to, to uh, dehydrate and or like, sorry uh, to evaporate this uh, big portion of water and to develop a dry or powdered product. So the best option would be to go for a, a beverage or a soup stock, so we can keep this uh, big portion of water and further process into a valuable product. When we are developing a food product, and we must ensure the food safety. So uh, heat treatment is a primary uh, met is the primary method of ensuring uh, food safety in uh, processing, which is um, practi practical for many small scale producers. So we s first we study the heat stability of sheep whey uh, using four model systems and we used uh, seven commercial whey samples and uh, within the pH below 4.5 because uh, at this pH it's um, uh, the micro uh, it's less susceptible for microbial growth and um, we can use a heat treatment at 90 degrees for five minutes which you can um, perform like a batch process not like a continuous process and which is more uh, economical and uh, cost effective. Uh, if you want to keep the, uh, use the higher pH, then you might need to go for ultra heat treatment and like continuous process, which is uh, highly expensive versus these conditions. So we studied the heat stability of sheep whey under these conditions. And uh, we determined the stability based on the sedimentation, turbidity, color, and particle size, and how the protein aggregations occur, and, but today I uh, basically use the sedimentation results to explain the main findings of this study. So uh, the samples he treated at pH 3.5 were generally stable because they only produce like uh, less than 0.5% of uh, sediments. And you can see this, pi this picture is like after uh, allowing these uh, whey samples to stand overnight after the heat treatment. So at pH 3.5, you can you can see it's uh, it doesn't form like any sediments like at pH 4.5. In pH 4.5, all the st all the samples were like almost unstable, like they produce um, nearly 13 to 40 percent of sediment, and the color color and the turbidity everything changed. And we saw an exception in one commercial sample, which we have, uh, which they have done, uh, salting in cheese milk. So um, 
that sample they have done salting in cheese meal, uh, it was unstable even at pH 3.5. So uh, because of that, we wanted to do, um, start, uh, know what, what kind, what, how much salt we can allow to uh, achieve a stable product. So we did uh, an extended study in a model model system, and we add salt into the clean way we produce in the lab, and we. We, f we, fig we figure out like after adding 5.8 grams of grams of salt per liter, it starts to produce a huge amount of sediments, like over 40 percent. And um, this this graph clearly shows what happened in that study. The blue line um, the blue line shows. Um, how the conductivity of the samples increases when we increase the soil content. So um, the other thing is we can use conductivity as a measure of uh, soil content in your samples because it's um, not easy to um, quantify those soil contents in, in your samples in, in your uh, cheese processing facilities. So this is one option which you can uh, try. and. And in the green line shows the sedimentation, how it occurs d when we increase the salt content. And after like 5.5 grams of salt, it starts giving up like huge amount of salt, um, huge amount of sediment. So it, uh, the products, uh, the way samples were highly unstable. And uh, in addition to this, we try to uh, uh, measure the conductivity of some other commercial samples to. Uh, which we can use as a guideline if you want to develop a product out of these waste streams. And you can think like how salty your product could be. Um, this is uh, a carbonated soft drink, and they had salt um, like 0.1 grams per liter, and it showed a conductivity of 13.16. And this is like a pulpy orange juice, and it had a bit higher salt, and you can see when the salt content increases, the conductivity increases. So if you want to develop a beverage, so you know how salty these products are, so you can match your, uh, the new product and think about a range which you can uh, develop and uh, how, how salty your product could be. And in addition to this, we're, we, we measure the um, conductivity of some soup stocks available in the supermarket. So the low salt ones had uh, like 0.28 grams of so sodium, and the normal soups, uh, normal chicken stock, it had like, uh, somewhat higher salt content, and even a vegetable stock, it was it, sh it reported the highest. So you can see when uh, when the salt content increases, it increases the conductivity, and. Uh, if you had your normal way strain, like without uh, done salting in cheese meal, you can still use it for uh, developing a beverage, like combined with a fruit juice or fruit pulp, or you can go for a soup stock with low sodium. And if you have added your added done salting in cheese meal, so you can uh, go for like soup stock, but you can think how salty your product could be, and you can probably um, like combined with some other waste streams without salt. So, so what you can take home from this study is uh, there's a potential in sheep milk whey which, um, we, which we could process into a stable base ingredient for a beverage or a soup stock, but um, essentially we need to control the pH, salt content, and the heat treatment. Um, in addition to that, we can use conductivity as a measure of the soil content, and we can come up with different formulations to uh, optimize the stability and the sensory quality of the product. Um, and in addition to this main uh, part which I present today, we are still studying on the uh, small molecular metabolites in sheep milk whey using NMR spectroscopy. And uh, further, we are studying the heat uh, induced aggregations of whey protein and what kind of whey proteins are involved in making aggregates during these heat treatments. And um, we found out that curd contamination in whey is one of the major problems. So uh, it can affect effect uh, like if we allow to stand the whey with the curd in it and the minerals in the curd can migrate into the waste stream and um, so we are still studying about how the storage pH and this um, 
how it affects the mineral migration from contaminated and cut into waste streams. And still, we are studying about the properties of these uh, sediments form with uh, different levels of salt, pH, and heat treatment. So finally, I'd like to thank uh, to Bioprocess Alliance for uh, the financial assistance for this project. And sorry. And uh, King's Maid Arts and Cheese and uh, Century Hill Organics for providing sheep milk and commercial waste samples for this project. And uh, my supervisors, Alice Terka and Abby Thompson from Messi, and Linda Samuelson and Lee Day from uh, Ag Research. So thank you very much. After heat treatment, how long is that waste stable for and how long can it be stored? Um, we haven't done like the shelf stu life studies or microbiological studies on this, but um, in terms of stability, you can see like if you perform the heat treatment at uh, pH 3.5, um, and the pictures I showed were like after the, uh, standing overnight, um, overnight after heat treatment, and um, but if it's like at pH 4.5, still you can uh, get very unstable product. In terms of uh, microbiological safety, we need to do separate studies on that, but we haven't done that, and it's not out of scope of this, my project. Um, it appears that there is, is there a critical transition where below a certain level of salt it's okay and then above that there's a sharp transition to destabilization and do you know sort of what mechanism leads to this destabilization uh when when you have the ionic strength um ionic strength of the medium affects the protein aggregation during heat treatment so the sodium affects the ionic strength and when you heat treat at high ionic strength at uh the protein aggregate more tend to aggregates than at low mining strength. And there's a critical concentration, so uh, it's not a smooth transition? Uh, yeah, I'm not pretty sure about the, what is the exact point, but according to the study, we found out around like 5.5 grams per litre of sodium chloride, added sodium chloride, but still there might be some other minerals which are already present in the waste stream. This is, I'm talking only about the added salt level, so you still need to study specifically. So just I've got one to finish off. Mahika, what is the quantity of whey that we currently produce from New Zealand sheep cheeses? Um, sheep, uh, it depends, like uh, some producers have like hundreds or some producers have thousands, but with respect to the cow dairy industry, they process like billions of litres. Yeah. So it's very little amount. That's why we have lots of uh, limitations on those kind of heat treatments and what kind of unit operations we can do when we process, we want to process it. Thank you, Mihika. Thanks.